There she is. I got away, Nicola. I have not ridden her in a very, very long time. Look at that. It's like oxygen. The other day, or actually, it kind of started a couple weeks ago when Duff was here. Uh, we, we rode over to Dunkin' Donuts, as you do when you're with Duff, I guess. And he noticed that my Nicola had some wobble in it, and I thought he was crazy. But then I thought, ah, I've taken a couple of spills in it, maybe it is something. Anyways, recently I started feeling it. I wondered, what is this wobble? I took a look at the tire, and I noticed something interesting. But let me show you this wobble first. Coming alive! Whoa! Now is the time! That's not normal. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh. So this is the CST tire that comes stuck on the Nikola, and it's got this famous tread, I'll call it. It's very famous because it's such a soft compound, which kind of makes it nice to ride. However, it, it gets worn down quickly, and then also it gets worn unevenly, and that's what I think is the culprit. It, it might be a loose axle nut, I don't think so. You can see there's a lot of this tread that's raised here that's like still kind of, I don't know, bumpy original tread. And on this side, you have a lot less of it. There's just a little bit right there. Just, just that little bit on the edge. Uh, there was a guy in Miami who gave me very graciously a really awesome other tire, which he got off of Amazon. I'll link that down below if you want that. Um, and I'm gonna put that on, try that out. So this video is kind of, it's a review. I'm gonna do a review, kind of, my thoughts, my opinions on what that tire is, how it feels on this Nikola, and a little bit of a how-to to change a tire on the Nikola, but I don't really do like tire change videos. I know I kind of did one on my 16X, but tire changes are awful, but necessary sometimes, and a good skill to have. This is the Amazon tire, that's what I'm calling it. Similar to the CST, but wider and thicker. And I think it has less of that angled thing. It's more rounded, like an MSX tire, kind of. Please don't make this too difficult. Okay, I made a little list of what we have to do to accomplish this task, which again, I'm very much dreading. A, remove the outer shell. B unplug the battery, probably most important, but you do have to remove the shell first to do that. Unplug the motor wires from the control board, remove that awful piece of plastic, slide the tire out, then remove the tire, why did I write remove the tire twice? I think I was, it was late at night when I wrote this. Get the tire out, put the new tire on, and then put it all back together. So those are the basic steps. I don't know how many seven or eight steps that is, but that's what you have to do to change the Nikola. These are the tools you might need. By the way, I'm probably on some kind of a weird time crunch slash schedule on this because my dad's lawn service, like his buddy has a lawn company and gives him like a deal on it or whatever. Anyways, they're gonna come cut the grass at some point, so that might put a damper on the day, but just giving you a fair warning. Do every other, like a car tire. I really should have worn like a bathing suit to do this. And after you've done that, to make sure you get rid of all the excess power that's stuck inside, press your power button. You should see these kind of light up a little bit when you do it. And just press it, like hold it, and then press it a few times. Just, you know, get it all out.
No. Oh, they made it. Dang it. They're pretty quick on starting too. They just like just rolled up and then boom, they're out. They're doing it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that means I probably can't talk to the camera for a little while. It's fine. You guys will get over that. I'll get over that. Don't forget to take the motor phase wires out and then the hall sensor. So you got this cluster basically. This little thing comes off. All right, so we got this thing uh, flipped back over. We got it all, all the screws out. I have the new tires on standby here. Um, I'm gonna probably take a quick break so I can get some water because it is crazy hot and humid here. But essentially the next few steps are lift this little silly, whatever this white thing is out of the way. And you've gotta get uh, this little LED thing out the way, just like this. And then we have the dreaded, this little stupid panel right here. This, getting this thing off is a pain in the butt. But after that, it's pretty much home free. This is the water we have in New York. I don't know how we got this in Florida. But it's nice to have. Because Florida water is awful. Once you peel back this and this, then you have this little weatherproofing gasket thing, which has held up pretty well. So hopefully I don't rip it here. The trick is, I think you lift it, you pull it up. That's it. So it feels like you're about to break it, but I promise you, you didn't. I gotta say this is a lot easier than the first time. So maybe after you do a tire change, the second time will be a lot easier. Anyways. to mention was a couple of things uh make sure you mark which side was which i like to make sure it's you know the right side was the right side so i put a little piece of tape here on the right side so when i put it back i do it correctly but anyways you gotta let the air out of your tire here and that's the first step to uh getting this thing off once you like this is like the, past this is when it all falls into place. That pop is a good sound. All right. All right. I don't want to pinch anything. I'm so afraid of pinching it. Important step here is to make sure that you didn't pinch anything and that you actually get this thing back inside the wheel well appropriately. There we go. Having an electric pump really helps. I like it at 35 PSI. Okay. Uh oh. No. Uh, no power. I see, I see. Okay. That is not a good sign. It's not holding the air. Crap, crap, crap. Okay, I re I'm really taking lunch now. And then, I, good thing I have this backup. This is the Uzo One. Look at this guy. Straight from E Wheels. Right there. That's why I pinched her. Son of a gun. All right. At this point, I've only got one one more shot. There. 
This is arguably the hardest part about the whole process. Got it. Now hopefully, hopefully we didn't pinch anything along the way. I want to go that way, yes. No, I popped the inner tube. <sighs> this is awful. No! It's these tire irons that I got. They're just like a little too large and they were grabbing too far and I couldn't tell. And somewhere underneath here there's a giant, there it is, there's a giant gash. So now I have no Nicola and no way to get around. So I reached out to Jason after my embarrassing and awful debacle of popping two. Let me just show you here. I popped two of these. One, two. The one that was already on the wheel, like an idiot, I popped it putting back on. It's ah, oh, no worries, I got a backup. Then I popped that one. It was a pretty big gash too. Word to the wise, uh, when you are putting your tire back on, don't use tools once you get it past the first rim and you've now installed the um, inner tube, when you go to put that second, what would you call it, second outside wall onto the rim itself, you gotta use your body weight and your hands are just inch along the top, uh, just going around one side till you finally finish it off. I was trying to use a tire iron to just flip that last little bit and that put me in twice. <laughs> it did me in. All that to say, uh, Jason graciously sent me, oops, Jason graciously sent me um, not one, but two of these because he probably figured I might screw it up a second time. Um, but now, she's back. I filled her up with some kind of air. I didn't completely pump it all the way. Um, also, sad note that my electric one died, so I have to go the old-fashioned way over there. And then this wild old piece of machinery to check to see that I hit my desired 35 PSI. That pop seems to be normal when you do that kind of thing. Let's just turn it upright and try it out, I guess. I like to do this before I put it all back together because, you know, that would suck if it didn't work. It's exactly the sign I wanted to hear, or sound. Good deal, good deal. All right, now I'm just gonna put it back together and uh, test it out, see how it feels. Well, I can tell you straight away, this tire feels a lot better. I just rode it from the house over to where I am here. Uh, just look, quick little speed runs, quick little, you know, just juking left and right. This tire feels a lot like an MSX tire. If you guys know what that's like, it's got a more rounded profile to it. Unlike the CST that used to be on there, that has more of what I call like a triangle feel. There's a point in the middle and so it kind of almost has like a little bit of the gyro feel, a little bit, but more like you fall over the edge of that wheel when you get to the extremities. Uh, so like when you're making a deep carve, it's like you gotta kind of fall over the edge a little bit, but there's still a bit of gyro. This has no gyro whatsoever. There's a lot like an MSX tire. I can carve left and right super easy. So it's gonna take me a day or so to like get used to how easy I can get into these turns, but I think I'm gonna love this tire a lot more. And it feels smooth too. Like it feels, you know, tire compounds are a thing. Like how hard or soft is the compound and this, I think is a harder compound, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels really nice, and I really feel comfortable with the grip that this has. So I'm gonna do some speed runs and then give you my actual thoughts after that. But we'll set up the camera, I'll get my gear on, and we'll do some speed runs. Oh wait, I've been wanting to capture this. Here's an iguana in Florida. These things are wild. There we go. It's hard to capture them because they're fast. See that crazy thing? Isn't that crazy? They're everywhere. Excuse me, they're everywhere. Um, when I've been fishing out here, it'd be like you turn around, there's a giant iguana just sitting behind you, staring at you. They didn't used to be here like when I was a kid, so it's kind of a weird new phenomenon, but it's a little scary. I don't, I don't think they'll harm you, but they'll also sit up in these trees. They'll sit up in the palm trees and they'll sit there, and then like when they get spooked or 
board or whatever, they'll just leap out of them like onto the ground, which is kind of wild. Um, and like if you were under one, it could like land on your head, I guess. But unrelated, let's get my gear on, let's set up the camera, let's do some runs on this thing and see how it really fares when I really crank it. incredibly easy to turn on this thing. It is so nice. That rounded bottom side, unlike the CST tire, uh, just lets you just roll right into those. I know it sounds ridiculous because like all tires should be like this, but uh, I approve. This is so much better. I'm gonna put a link up here for this thing on Amazon. That's ditch the CST tire if you're riding that. Get rid of it if you have a Nikola. Get this tire so much better feels like a really, really nice Gotway. It's it's one step closer to the MSX, but uh, I approve of this tire. Well, that about does it for me, guys. I very much love this tire. This was such a long-awaited thing. I had this tire for like a couple of months and I was skeptical about using it or putting it on, but I just, I got tired of the other one. So finally I did it worthwhile. I recommend all of you Nikola owners switch to this tire right away. Again, I'm sure I've had links all over this video for this tire. I love it that much. Uh, go ahead and buy that tire. Uh, I think it's on Amazon, right? Yeah, so like you can get it really easily. Um, if not, I'll put a new link to wherever it ends up, but great tire. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more content like this, Go ahead and comment down below, tell me what you thought. Go ahead and subscribe, click the notification bell, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, keep riding, never stop.